What I'm going to talk about is a project called, actually some kind of a side project called the uh, Simpsons Detector. That's something that I did a couple of months after the hackathon the Ron and I attended. Um, a bit about myself, my name is Tzach, I mainly do data science consultant uh, around fraud, pre fraud prevention areas or fintech in general, but that, that's not why we're here. Uh, we're here to, to talk about the Simpsons detector. So the first uh, and probably the most important thing here is to remember that it was a purely educational and something I just did for fun. I actually, actually I took the Andres uh, Carpati course, the CS231, uh, it's actually a pretty good one. And I wanted to do something with the uh, $500 that I had on GCP credit, so like buying some GPUs and trying to, to run a, a neural network was something that I, I, I thought it, it would be fun. Um, and all the episodes that I already had from The Simpsons were just a, a pretty cool data set. So what we're going to do is we are trying to to classify a single frame, okay? Not a full episode, just a single frame. And just output a vector of a one hot and one hot encoded vector, sorry, of uh, which character was was in the image, only for the four main characters. Okay, we'll we'll keep it easy. Um, I thought it is gonna be something like a weekend or two. It eventually went out to be a bit more, but that's why I chose only four characters and uh, and and working only on the image and not on the video itself. Although there are pretty pretty nice uh, deep learning ways to, to, to deal with sequences. Uh, so that's basically what we're trying to do. And then I'll just show an example now of how the real output looks like. Uh, the real output takes a, a full episode and just samples some of the frames and generates something like we'll see now. It's a tagged video. <laughs> Lisa, honey, you're hurt. But hurting me back is not going to feel as good as you think. Just know that I am very, very sorry. <laughs> okay, so you can see the, the characters on the bottom alternating. And now we can see actually a false prediction. Bart has appeared, although he's not in the image. No one likes feeling like That's how I felt back in the field. But I sucked it up for eight years. Now it's your turn. Okay, so basically, the final output of everything will be a full episode uh, that looks like this. The episode on top, and then on the bottom you can just see which character is currently appearing. Uh, since we're in PyData and not in any kind of uh, deep learning or machine learning uh, uh, talk, I, and we only have 30 minutes, I don't have a lot of time to get into how exactly the network is built and the architecture, and I must say it's probably not the, 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 the very interesting part of it. It's a fairly simple uh, network built on top of VGG. We'll talk a little bit about something that has some Python relevance of how do we implement that with Keras. That, that was the, the package that I chose to use. But just so we'll all be on the same line, I'll give a short, a very short uh, intro for CNN. CNN stands for uh, Convolutional Neural Networks. Uh, we'll treat it today as some kind of a black box. The, the, the important thing to remember are that it it's somehow magically learns a couple of filters, okay? And here we already see the, the learned features, uh, filters, I'm sorry, and then we also learn some weights that, that combine or take some, some of the activations of the filters and actually moves them to be whatever output we want. I wanted a vector of four indices, uh, which every one of them is the probability to see Bart, Homer, Lisa, and Marge. Okay, so generally, if everything went well and if the training went well, what I would expect is to first to learn filters that are meaningful for my problem. So here we can see that we somehow learned the Marge hair and Marge eyes and uh, Bart's hair, which are probably indicative. And then I would also expect the weights to, to, to actually say something like P Marge would be, sorry, would be high if we saw those two filters and P Lisa would be high if we got, if we found in the image one of these, okay? That's like in, in less than a minute, I hope, uh, some general overview, overview about what a CNN is and probably the important things that we need to know for, for today's talk. So if I take uh, Halisi and her dragons, I would probably expect, if my network is good, to get a vector of zeros, okay, more or less, because neither of the characters are really in the image. 
And if I take this image, which is basically a, a margin Lisa, I want to get something like zero for Bart, zero for Homer, and something around one for the two other uh, characters. That's the only uh, deep learning stuff we're going to do today. The rest will be some Python code and some really nice thing that I had to do in order to generate the training set. Um, but first, we'll talk about transfer learning. So that's a, con and that's a concept. It, it happens in a lot of problems, not only in deep learning, that we sometimes just don't have enough data to, to learn or to, 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 to study everything from scratch. And what we actually want to do is we want to have a jump start to, to start with something that someone already learned, maybe on a different data, but something similar, and try to see how we can take something and then maybe just fine tune or just learn some other few layers which are possible with a, with a limited amount of data that we have. So I started with VGG. VGG, again, we're not talking any, any deep learning, uh, deep stuff, but VGG is uh, probably very common architecture for uh, image processing. And it's a fairly simple one, so it's pretty easy to, to choose what exactly do we want to do with it. Uh, the input of VGG is an image, as you can see here, and then it goes through several layers, several CNN layers. It does some stuff at the, at, at the middle. And at the end, what it does is it outputs a vector of a thousand categories, okay? That was the problem that VGG was trained on. It's called ImageNet, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm not interested in the thousand categories. I'm not interested if a, a cat or a dog or a house or a sheep or whatever was in the image. But maybe something that it learned here and took weeks to train would be useful for me, even though I'm only looking on Simpsons and a, a cartoon and it's not a real image and not, and not everything, probably these layers would still remain the same or at least be beneficial and save me some time. So my model would, will take VGG, actually a pre-trained version of VGG, and, and I have a hyperparameter inside that can allow me to choose where do I want to hook my model in. Do I want to take this output or this output or this and that? Uh, I tried many. Uh, actually, the last one was the best. Like, taking as much as I can from VGG was the best. And we'll see an example of how, how can we do it pretty easily with Keras. Um, I don't know if you can really read the code, so I'll try to, to, to go over it. Uh, basically, if you've used Keras before, you probably know about the create model uh, uh, concept. That's, uh, that's a function that we, that we need to implement that basically builds our whole, our whole model. Uh, building a model in Keras is something like this. We are basically using layers and, uh, and other components that Keras already gives us. And what I, what I also used is the Keras Applications VGG, which is the pre-trained and pre-built uh, VGG model. So what am I doing here? We have the input size, okay, the input, I'm sorry, which is of unknown input size, but that doesn't really make a difference, okay? We have some tensor or some, uh, some, I don't know, placeholder to hold the input. Then I'm building the VGG model. That's something that Keras does automatically for me. It comes with Keras, you don't really need to do anything. And then I'm building another model which will take VGG input, which is this, the image, okay? And its output would be the layer that I chose to hook in, okay? So now I have a, a sub-VGG model, something that will just take the part that I'm interested in from VGG, and that would be the output, okay? So X here is actually applying uh, the base model over, the, the, over my input, then I'm actually getting the, the version of VGG that I wanted, the, 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 the output layer of VGG that I wanted, and then I can just continue building the rest of my network like I would do with any other model. I didn't build anything dramatic here, so we're not going to spend some time on that. Um, and that's it. We compile the model, return it, and that's our create model. So transfer learning from any other model, any other trained model, and Keras already comes with pretty much uh, uh, qu quite a lot of, uh, of, of applications it's pretty easy, pretty straightforward, and I just saved myself probably a couple of weeks of training because someone has already trained VGG and, 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 and all the weights are, uh, are meaningful even for my problem. Second problem is that like with any other um, deep learning uh, network, we need quite a lot of data to train it. And a data in my case is an image, a full image, and the labels in my case would be the one hot encoded vectors. Okay, so I need quite a lot of images. Extracting, them, extracting the images from the videos is not a really hard problem. It's actually pretty easy. I could, I could easily get thousands of them. 
But tagging the images are a really hard problem. I couldn't do it in any way other than sending it to, to a crowdsourcing uh, uh, platform or something like Mechanical Turk, or I, I actually used Heat Intelligence uh, to give a human the, the, the task of actually uh, checkboxing which, uh, which character appeared there. Um, and, and that's expensive. Like I, I, I paid a couple of, uh, I think it was $15 or $20 for a couple of uh, Filipinos, Indians, uh, Chinese, or whoever uses those platforms uh, to, to, to actually tag some of my images. But that was, I only did it for testing because I, I only had a couple of hundreds of them and that's fairly good for testing. That's nothing for, for training. I, ha I need to have a way for, for, for generating a lot of images, really a lot of them. And I don't know, naturally I thought let's, let's use Google Images. Because if I go to Google and I, I uh, search for Bart Simpson, I would probably get a lot, and I do get a lot of images. The problem is the f that most of them looks like this. This is actually a, a real screenshot from, uh, from Google Images, and that's what happened when you search for Maggie. And these are not perfect images to, to, to learn from. Like, this is crap, this is nonsense, that, this doesn't really look like Bart in, in, a, real, uh, in a real image. And obviously, Maggie is even worse. Uh, eventually, what I did is I ran a, a search for all main characters, actually for every character I knew about, okay? Uh, containing Mo and then and all, all the others. I manually selected only the clean images. That took me like an hour, but an hour of my time is, is probably fair. And I only took images that I can easily separate the background from. So I wouldn't take anything that comes from a real scene of, uh, of The Simpsons because I couldn't really take automatically uh, crop only the image. But if we, if we had something like this image, for example, or that one, I think OpenCV could easily uh, uh, just take the background out. And eventually I got something like this. So that's basically my training set. I have a lot of images for every character. And I already cropped all, only, the, only the character. I already resized them all to 300 on 300 pixels. And eventually I got something between 50 to 150 uh, images per character. But that's not a real training set because I cannot train my network with that. That doesn't look like a, a real frame from a, from a Simpsons episode. So what I really need to do is to take my, my I don't know, let's call it a, the pre-training set and build or generate a real training image. Okay, so what I'm doing here is basically my, I don't know, algorithm was to take a random background and I detected backgrounds by uh, actually sampled a lot of frames from many episodes and took only frames that did not contain a lot of pixels that are close to the Simpsons yellow picture, which is a very, very unique one. And then I got a lot of frames like this, okay? So in my experiment, I had something like a couple of hundreds of, uh, of a, a pool of a couple of hundreds of backgrounds to choose from. Then in every iteration of the generator, I choose how many characters do I want to have in the specific frame. In this example, it's two, and I chose Bart and Homer. I could also choose the character, the meta character called others, which is just a lot of images of all the other characters, okay? It's actually very important to add that one. I, I, I wouldn't really get into that, but basically if I don't do that, then the network would learn that yellow color is everything, is everyone, and it would just hit one for everyone. Okay, so I need to add a lot of images that are yellow, but are not Bart, Homer, Marge, and Lisa. And then once I, once I, cho once I choose the, the actual image, I scale it, rotate it, flip it, do whatever I want with it, and just randomly place it on the, on the background. That way I can, gener I, I can actually generate endless amount of, uh, of Simpsons, uh, Simpsons frames. And uh, looking, for, looking backward, I can actually say that I think 90% of, of my time on this project was writing and then and, and making the generator better. Because uh, if the generator generates something that, is, that doesn't really look like a real frame, then you will have problems learning later. Actually, you will actually you will learn, but you will have problems applying that for for a real uh, a real image. So these are actual examples for uh, for training set images. Okay, that was actually generated by by the, the generator, and you can see that it's not always it doesn't always make sense. Like for example, this one. Uh, Homer and Lisa are kind of floating in the air and are, are cut in an un unreal way. 
but I don't really care. It looks more or less like a frame from Simpsons and my network would probably learn that uh, pretty well. Okay, this code, <laughs> that's a bit more code. Uh, again, I'll just briefly go over it. I know that you probably cannot see it, but the way to do that with Keras is to use the feed generator uh, method that every model has. So we can actually, instead of, instead of learning with feed, which would take an X and Y, static X and Y, just iterate them over, a feed generator would use a generator that, that I give it, and my generator needs to yield X and Y at the end. And then I'm free to do whatever I want. I'm free to take my training set and just random more and more images as my network needs. I'm actually using internally uh, the Keras image data generator. Okay, Keras comes with a built-in uh, image data generator that takes care of uh, rotating and flipping and scaling and stuff like this. I needed that, but that was not enough. So I, I use it internally. I basically do while true, I take the batches, okay, the X, the X, okay, I, for every iteration I do a random permutation just so we will get random results. And then I work in batches of, I think it was 32, again, some kind of a hyperparameter in my network. And for every batch I generate a, an array of zeros that will hold all the images. And then I just go over and train and, and generate another one and another one for, from the same X and Y batches, okay? That's the process that gives me uh, at every iteration 32 uh, images and 32 output vectors. And that's what I yield at the end. Uh, if you really want, actually this code is not the real code. I kind of cut a lot of stuff from it. Uh, if you want to see the real code both from this, for this and for the other, uh, for the other code, uh, there is a link at the end for the original blog post. This whole talk is based on some kind of a blog post that I wrote about the Simpsons detector and then you can have first some many more uh, interesting issues and then the link to GitHub and to everything. You can have the data and the code and uh, run it yourself or I don't know, do whatever you want. Um, okay, next we're going to see some examples. Like uh, normally when I give this talk then we talk a little bit about CNN and what's, what are weaknesses and what my network might not have learned well. Uh, we didn't do it here, but still I'll say that uh, remember that we, we learned from Google Images. And in Google Images, most uh, images are face front. So we normally don't get to see, or the network didn't really get to see Homer, for example, from the back or from the side or something like this. And we will see that that's a major problem. Let's begin with some with some false, false predictions. Uh, again, in the blog post, I have a, a, a longer video. It's about eight minutes with a lot of examples. Uh, here, I only picked like a two or three for every, for every category. What we're gonna see here are that, first, we have a problem with scenes with many characters. Like, if we have a lot of yellow in the image, it will probably start predicting everyone and it, it's gonna be a real mess. And, when, and only once we get back to an image with, uh, I don't know, like one character or two, uh, is where we are going to see the more accurate results. Uh, personally, I believe that that's because I only chose to, to generate a lot of training images with one, two, and three uh, characters. Okay, so that's kind of a problem. Uh, small characters are obviously a problem. If the character is very, very small, we would probably wouldn't detect it. And again, it was another uh, parameter in, in my training process to choose how much do I want to scale the, the, the images. Okay, and characters that don't face the camera, you'll see it in the, in the, third, uh, in the third frame there. Okay, so that's an example for multiple characters in the scene. Let's communicate. You. So, you'd like me to save the town. Well, you've got gumption, I'll give you that. <laughs> Here we have a lot of problems, actually. That's a pretty bad scene. Um, I guess the dark and, uh, and weird background has also something to do with that. Uh, the network performs better on, on background, like the, the outside background or outdoors or, or something like this. You can see that when they were very, very small, we didn't detect anything, and only now we start detecting something. Look at Homer now. Look at when Homer looks to the sides. Okay, you can really, you can actually see him flicker in the, in the bottom bar. Yeah, Bart, who cares? The sun is shining, Bert. And also we don't detect Bart here. Are staring up at the sky in terror. Okay, so three examples for false predictions for actually the main problems that I kind of expected to have because I'm only, I'm only learning from Google Images. Um, ooh, battery is very low, 7%. Let's, let's hope that we can make it. 
Uh, the next video would be some nice catches, actually catches that I didn't really expect the model to, 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 to catch, okay? That's a pretty nice one. We could see all of them and it was, that's really good. This is, nice. look at their hair now. Okay, Bart's hair is probably a pretty strong indicator for Bart and even if it's not here, we could still pick him. Simpsons time. I have no idea how it detected Bart and Homer here. Not here, but here, yeah. Actually, just put the last one for the music for for the for, for Lisa's playing. Um, yeah, that basically that's it. If you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to take one. That's the the link for the original blog post and the QR codes QR code also uh, leads there. Uh, so that's only if you have like 15 minutes and you really want to read about uh, some other cool stuff that was there. Um, basically, that's it. Questions? Mm. No, not really. Okay, so the, the question was how much time does it take to to to, to to do the, the inference part, like to actually run the model and, and get the result. Uh, I couldn't really do it on real time, like that was my dream. My dream was to have a web page where you could actually drag and drop your uh, Simpsons episode and it would just play it and on, on the bottom do the, 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 the magic trick with the, with the characters. I couldn't really run it in front end, uh, like on the browser, mainly because the model is pretty, pretty heavy and then because it just takes more time than the, than the running time. So what I'm doing is I have my own class that generates the, the full video and exports it as a, as a video. It takes me around, I don't know, maybe two or three, let's say tops five minutes or something like this to generate something for, for a, a full episode, I think. Yes. Okay, so if I, the, again, the question was about the training size, and if I remember correctly, but I'm not really sure here, it was around 50,000 images, something like this, that were generated with the generator and then went into the network. Yeah, so about the transfer learning, uh, it, it seemed weird for me as well. Like, I didn't really expect a, a very good transfer learning from ImageNet. Like, the, the VGG was trained on ImageNet, which, uh, for those of you who don't know, it's, it's a set of real images, like camera-taken images, and what I'm running through is cartoons, which are not really the same. That's why I thought I would have to play with that a lot, and I built my code so I can choose the, the, the hook-in point. Eventually, the last one was the best. I really don't know why, but it just worked. So VGG, VGG is the architecture, and it was trained on a, on a data set called ImageNet. That's a lot of images. I don't really remember how many, but the output is a, one of, I think, thousand categories. Okay, so a, a category there would be a cat, a dog, a house, uh, something like this. But again, when I did the transfer learning, I only took the first, uh, the first convolutional layers. I didn't really take the, the weights part, okay? So when they learn which patches are relevant for dogs, I didn't take those weights. I just cropped the network at that part and I only took the convolutional features. And then I added my own layers that learned Homer, Marge, Lisa, and Bart. Okay, I think, think we're done. Thanks.